Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw. So this photo has, um, you're wearing a hat and it has these beautiful, almost pheasant feathers uh, or peahen. I don't know why I know that's a peahen, but I, I guess maybe a peahen feathers. It's a really nice hat. I don't even know what it's called. Your hair is, is dyed a nice plum. You're wearing glasses. The light, the light is soft. You have, uh, it's very Canadian because you, you've got like sort of, it's not like, it doesn't look like it's sunny outside or summer outside. So you've got like a nice blouse and like a, a kind of, uh, it's nicely blurred. The background, you can see a Canadian flag, the hints of it. It's got red and blue. You have nice eye makeup. What is this all about? That was probably during a conference for a peace ambassador event that we had. Uh, we did a music event for Peace Day. Uh, International oh. Peace Day is on September 21st for anybody that would like to know more about that. Uh, you know, there's music events around the globe. People are celebrating peace, bringing people mm -hmm. uniting. Um, and I was always with the peace ambassador in the back, I, the Canada flag. So you see that in the blur, probably the Canadian mm -hmm. flag. Uh, the hat is just people like me wearing hats. Um, I have a bunch of oh, hats nice. in that corner over there. Um, so I have different hats from my tea parties and tea events that I've done. Uh, so yeah. Um, and I love feathers. Feathers for yeah. me represent angels and I'm very guarded with a lot of angels, even angels that I don't know of. I feel them around me. I feel that that's why I'm connected to a lot of older guests come to my platform. My youngest was 12 years old and my oldest guest was 91. Okay. Okay. So why don't you talk about these, these peace conferences? Because that is so outside my experience. You know, what, how does, what does that look like? Well, uh, that was really weird how that happened. Uh, I was just doing my tea parties and that, and I met a woman, she met me on Facebook. We still don't even know how she finds all of us people, but she does. And mm -hmm. she's in Israel, uh, Galit Grosser. Uh, she does the I Love Me project. And she's seen that I was doing Sacred Hearts Rising, a, a bunch of anthology books that I've been a part of as well. And I shared my story. And she's like, Liz, we want to nominate you as a peace ambassador. And I said, well, I don't know. What. You know, I have my mood swings. I'm up, <laughs> down. I'm all over the place. Like, yeah, I, I want love. I want peace. But I do have my days where I'm just like, you know, uh, there's a little shit going on here. You know, like, you're like, you're but, like me alone. <laughs> <laughs> right? And I was like, you know, like on my bad days, I'm not very good peace ambassador to listen to. But a lot sure. of people, when they hear my story and they see where I came from and where I am today, they get inspired because they're like, Liz, mm -hmm. where do you get all this resilience? Like, where do you get the tenacity to keep pushing? And I said, I don't know. It, I honestly think it's my Oma that's always with me, uh, just pushing me and keeping me strong and moving. And the peace ambassador program, it started with a man who wanted to bring people together in his living room. Uh, he mm -hmm. sat in his living room and he knew somebody from the Peace Abbey in Vermont. And he just started reaching out to different people. And we all became different peace ambassadors for different countries. Canada had three of them. Uh, I'm one of them. Uh, we had another one in Toronto, uh, Shireen Af Afis from India, who lives in Toronto. She was one of the Canadian peace ambassadors. Um, mm -hmm. There's Sharan from BC. He was also a peace ambassador for Canada. So there was three of us. There was a couple for the United States. There was India, Pakistan, Nigeria, Tobago. Um, oh, there were so many. Israel, Switzerland, uh, mm -hmm. Haiti. There was 60 different countries. And we just came together every Friday. And we just kind of worked together. Like, what can, what can we help you with? A lot of us have projects and programs that were peace related or humanitarian based. Um, oh, wow. uh, so we would just help support each other. And then we put a music pro uh, program together uh, that was three and a half hours long, I think in 2020, it was a, a long, but we had different wow. schools. We had children's choirs in there. We had different countries in there, um, all different kind of drama of music. And we had people singing peace. It, it was nice. And I think that's what we need in today's world is we need people coming together 
being different, being unique, being confused. And well, how do I help? Yeah. How do I do this? Right. It's sad the pro the program only lasted one year, but I stay in contact with 99% of the ambassadors. I'm just like, Hey, if you need anything, I'm here, you know, just because it's done, we can still stay together. Mm -hmm. So, so, uh, I've had many, I, I mean, authors like to talk because authors want to share their stories. So they like to talk about their books. How many books have you written? Uh, four for Sacred Hearts Rising. So book one, two, three, and four, the whole series of Sacred Hearts Rising. Uh, that's an anthology collection. Then I wrote in Unstoppable Gems. That's another anthology collection. Then I wrote in Fears and Triumphs, COVID Story 19 with 50 other women oh. from diff different countries. That's another anthology that I wrote with, uh, which uh, Carol Azam, who does that. I have another anthology that's coming out, supposed to be this year, Invisible Soul, that was compiled by Constant Willard. And then I wrote my three mm -hmm. books. And I'm working on another set of books that are going to be out for Christmas if everything goes good. And the people who are super inspired by you... Which book should they, they read first? I highly recommend the tea books. Not because they are, but it's all Miss Liz in this book. Well, I highly recommend them too. And, and they're fun facts. Like it's not, it's not a, like a story, Ram. It's a story with self-help exercises, some fun facts, there's oh. recipes. And I take you to three different countries that all start with the letter TEA. So I take you to Turkey, England, and Australia. So you get to know a little mm. bit about those countries and fun facts that you might have not known. And they're not tea related. So people are like, okay, she didn't give us a tea. Why didn't she tell us? <laughs> ah, I'm giving you education. Like in the second book, I have the guy who invented or created in 1796, I believe it is. And he created the educational uh, system. So, yeah. So it just yep. gives you the information, right? Because a lot of people are just like, ah, we don't need history. Yeah, you do need history because history repeats. Coming to you from Cornwall, no less. Yep. <laughs> just a little northern girl who wants to make a difference with tea guys so uh, i love it i love it so okay so let's like because one of my my thing is i like to okay so it's very photographic in a sense like zooming in getting a nice sort of sense of the person zooming out getting a, another sense of them in terms of of as a service of what you're doing to the world you know to other people around you you're saying, okay, look, this here is a tool, it's a thing you can use, that you can improve your own life, you can find a meaning, you can find a path. It's very other-centric. So, is there a question? I guess the question is, how good are you at being selfish? Oh. <laughs> you should see your face. You're like, well, what? What? <laughs> No, I even just to self care myself, I'm like, I, I'd rather take care of somebody else than myself. But over the years, I've realized that in order for me to serve a good cup of tea, I have to take care mm. of myself too. So and a lot of people think that self care is selfish. and It's not, you know, uh, growing up, I thought it was selfish, but it's not. And we all have a little selfish in us, you know, we all want a little more, we all want, you know, that extra candy or that extra cookie, you know, it's in all of us, you know, sure. So, but so, selfish, I don't know about selfish. I... Mm, I, it's, funny, it's funny. It's interesting to see, like for me, it's just a question. And then it's interesting to see how your your face and your body are reacting to that question. Because I, I think you're so other centric and you're so, uh, how many, how many siblings do you have? I have uh, two sisters and two brothers. Okay. So a relatively large family. Um, okay. And as the eldest, you're like. To a certain degree, you have to shoulder a bit of the responsibility. And then in terms of how you're putting your energy into the world through these in these books and this effort, how do you understand what it is to, to give service to others? I, I never knew how to do it. I just did what my body, my like... Whatever was inside of me, uh, my inner child or my Oma or, you know, that was just saying, be different. 
Mm-hmm. So like a, a lot of people, when I, when people come on my podcast, I ask them, give me one word to describe yourself. And, and so they'll give me like beautiful, unique, special. For me, it's different. I'm different. Mm-hmm. I serve different. I am different. I'm not scared to show that I'm different, that I'm confusing at times that, you know, my mind goes and wanders. There's so many different colors in there. You know, like when you describe a medicine cabinet, all of a sudden my brain is starting to picture, okay, if I put a medicine cabinet in behind me, Mm -hmm. I wonder what kind of message that would give. You know, my mind doesn't stop. It just keeps going all the time. Do you do other, you you do, because there's a bit of uh, pottery behind you. I think it's pottery. Is that a collection or is this stuff that you've done? Like, do you, how how do you put your creative spirit into tangible, I mean, podcasts are intangible, you know, we're recording, but you know. But how, how do you, you put your creativity into something like material? Well, you're actually sitting in my tea room. So all of those potteries are teapots. Ah. And they were given to me by somebody. Uh, I was on the radio show a couple of years ago that they had in Cornwall. And when I was on it, they were like, Liz, like you were a mouse. You were like, hey, can I say it? Can I whisper? Can I talk? <laughs> and now they're like, who in the heck are you, girl? Like, you're just like, woof. <laughs> and I'm like, I just found my voice. You know, and they gave me that voice and her grandma passed and her grandma had all these teapots and she didn't want them anymore. Uh, you know, there was so much. She actually gave me 106 teapots. Oh, wow. So there's 106 teapots all on that wall. Plus, then I have my blue set here. Plus, I have another set of teacups here. I, this room alone has over 500 teacups in it. You don't Here's... see it. No, Okay. I have to interrupt. I'm sorry. I just have to interrupt. I'm a shit host. I'm very sorry. I have to. I'm so excited. <laughs> no, it's not that I'm excited. I have to interrupt to kind of not even insult you, but just to say you're a bit of a kook. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like here is this woman in this room with these teapots, sharing the love, giving out into the world this 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 sort of perspe- perspective. Like, it's astounding because. It's, it's, it's so unique. Like, it's, it's really, um, yeah, when I say kook, it's a total, uh, um. No, that's okay. I, you know what? I have crazy papers, so you can call me crazy. I have okay. f- official papers. So, like I said, I like confusion. You know, I've been through a lot, and there's trauma up there. There's so much up there. I mm-hmm. like that you said kook. I wasn't insulted yeah. or anything. Don't. For all the listeners out there, Miss Liz likes when people call me cook, crazy, you know, <laughs> fruit cake. Well, you, you've got 150 <laughs> plus teapots uh, behind you. This is your gang. I love it. I love it. 150 teapots on that side and another, yeah. I think, 36 on this side. Nice. Okay. So, like, let's wrap this up then. Okay. Because um, uh, we've gone through your four photos. We've learned about tea. And, and, and I absolutely adore I like seriously, you've made my week. Like this has been really interesting. Any bits of, of, of wisdom and knowledge and insight to get somebody fired up to go to, to discover their tea? Like what how do how do we put that kind of call to action or that that charge in somebody who's listening? Well, for all the listeners out there, I want you to sit at the table with anybody that's in your house or on a phone and ask people, what is your tea? Just get conversation going with three words. And see where those three words actually take you. It might take you on a real transformation. It might take you on an opportunity, possibilities. It might even take you on a job career. Mm. You just never know because, you know, you might be an accountant and that's not really what you want to do. But you want to do trading, but you don't like the accounting part, the budgeting, but, but you want to trade. So, you know, you give those words out. You just use the three words. Let's keep it simple. Let's just spill a good, strong cup of tea and let's get conversation going in your homes, in your communities, in your events. When you're having a conversation and you go to a a convention or something and you have nothing to talk about, you're in this room with a bunch of strangers, just look at them and say, hey, what's your tea? Nice. Did you just (laughs) ask me for a tea? (laughs) And then kind of get into the conversation. No, give me three words. I just met you. And you actually would get to know people. Because you can actually know a lot about people. I know a lot about you, Ram, by the three words you gave me. Yep. You, you actually gave me your story in three words. The turbulence, elevate, and allow. 
you gave me your your life story in three words that's how simple it is that's what i want to do is i want to get into the schools i want to get into the services the businesses anybody that would like to sit and serve tea with miss liz i'm here for you let's get your people in your communities talking we need open conversation we don't talk enough you know we text stop texting talk mm -hmm. get people to say those words speak it you know because when we speak it to the universe it actually happens we actually do transform elizabeth liz love it love it thank you so much this has been great this has been really great well i really appreciated the opportunity you know because sometimes we have to sit at a different table in order for people to understand what we're serving to So is life really a gift? Really? Can you make every second count? That's the whole point of the podcast. So if you like what you've seen and you're inspired, because that really is my mission, then please give it a like, subscribe, and share. Shooting it raw? Yes.